Hello, hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, anywhere, everywhere you are in the world. Welcome to Business Analysis Simplified. Yes, yes, yes. It's another week on this episode of Business Analysis Simplified where we try, right? We try to um, talk about business analysis, concept, idea, or a technique. Then we pull out the principles behind those techniques and we look at how we could apply those principles to our everyday living. If organizations are using it to thrive, why not use it in individual lives, family lives, family unit, community, and see how that could benefit us. So we try to draw parallels between how organizations use it and how we could apply it to individual lives. I hope your week was exciting. Hope you wrapped up nicely and I hope you are gradually uh, going into an enjoyable weekend. Happy Remembrance Day, everyone. Today is Remembrance Day in Canada. And of course, you know that when I'm going over my screen, I'm trying to pull in my BFF into this discussion. This discussion is incomplete without her. So bear with me here as I pull her in. Okay. So happy Remembrance Day. We are remembering all the armed forces, armed forces members who have died in the line of duty. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Happy Remembrance Day. I was just oh, yeah. saying happy Pumpy Day to our audience. Mm -hmm. if, um, if they live in the North American side. Yeah. Um, yeah, helping them uh, come to that surreal moment of realization of remembrance of the people yeah. that lost their lives in the line of duty, um, fighting for the sake of of, of the nation. So, um, how is yeah. that going? Yeah. Uh, how oh, are you celebrating Remembrance Day oh, on your end? Oh, I mean, uh, so my son has a game today, and for one, there's going to be a moment of silence in the game, which I think is really cool. And again, it's just um, thinking back and saying that there's nothing we have that we've not been given. The fact that we're here is because some people paid the price. The freedom we enjoy is because some people paid the price. As a parent, to be able to pay that price also in our own little way, in our community, not just for our immediate family, but for the world at large. Be kind to someone. Smile at someone. Make somebody, somebody's life a little bit better. I mean, I'm not saying become a mother Teresa, but I'm just saying let it be that everyone that comes in contact with us experiences kindness, mm -hmm. experiences goodness, experiences humanity in its finest form. That is the way we keep this freedom going. That's the way we keep life as we know it, you know, going. That's my own take. Okay, so. Everyone, go out there and show a little kindness right after this show. A little kindness to the next neighbor. Pay for someone's coffee, someone mm -hmm. behind you. Pay for, you know, pay for it. Do whatever it is. Exactly. It yeah. Comes across as kindness. Yeah. Awesome. So today, uh, we're going to talk about another business analysis technique. This technique is about the most common in all of the 50 techniques that we have been running through alpha in alphabetical order. Mm. So just so I don't know if you notice we're on the alphabet I. Yeah. Last week we talked about interface analysis. Today we're going to talk about interviews. Mm. Oh yes. That rings yeah. through a lot because at some point or another, you, our audience, Kiryu, you and I have been in interviews, one interview or another. Absolutely. But this, this technique is actually Business analysts use it. Organizations use it too. And so I see a lot of uh, relatable principles that we could pull from how organizations use it and how individuals could use it uh, to better their lives too. So let's quickly run through how an organization can use it, mm -hmm. how a business analyst within an organization can use it. Yeah. Because if it's, I mean, organizations generally would have different initiatives, different projects. Now they could use it on a higher level of that um, uh, vision for for the project, but yeah. a business analyst could then use it on a much deeper level, a granular level, 
So for instance, if it's a software development project, so what would happen is the business analyst will go out to different stakeholder groups that are looking mm -hmm. to actually implement that software. So okay. let's take for, for instance, it's an inventory management uh, software that they're looking to develop. So the different stakeholder groups that a business analyst could talk to could be first the end users, those that are actually in the forefront that will be using that software. Then another stakeholder group could be the managers, those that are in the back end mm -hmm. giving orders. Uh, and then Another set of group, uh, another group of stakeholders could be the uh, subject matter experts. We call them SMEs, right? Uh, the first time I heard SME, I thought it was a title. No, it's not. <laughs> Actually, it's not Ola, you, don't even, you, don't, you don't want to go there. I thought it was food. <laughs> I like, sounds like SME, sorry, like kind of food back, there, back home, right? So those are subject matter experts within the organization that know a little bit more uh, I like to call them know it all kind of people, but mm -hmm. we'll put them on one in one bucket. So what the business analyst will do is to go to this different stakeholder group. So for instance, if they go to the end users, they would ask what they're currently experiencing in terms of pain points, mm -hmm. in terms of limitations, right? Those would be the representation of the current state. How is it that we are managing our inventory in this organization today? Yeah. And then yeah. after crossing that uh, that bridge, then they'll go move on to, okay, how do we want the future state to be? What do we want this software to do for us? So they'll start identifying, itemizing all of the features or functionality that they want this new software to do for them. So that's the 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 desired state, the future state. Future right? state. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then once she moves, I'm talking in the in in the in the plural. I mean, pronoun using she now because I think a business analyst is great. Uh, we have great business analyst uh, ladies. We have we have men too. Uh, I'm not even our men. I'm not even our men. Yes, I I, I correct myself. I, I, I'm course correcting right now. Yes. Once the business analyst is done with that stakeholder group, they move to another stakeholder stakeholder group, which is the managers. Managers generally they would express their their uh desired future state in form in form of uh, a goal yeah like a strategic yeah strategic objective what it is i want to uh, accomplish overall from a yeah. from a from a ten thousand point view right mm -hmm. so they will say something like okay we want at least to be able to scale this what what do we i mean we want it to be scalable so we don't just want it to be for immediate use alone by the time we will we expand, we have mm -hmm. more warehouses or we have more locations. We still want this software to be able to serve us in that phase, right? So they would define those strategic uh, reasons why they want the implementation. And then the SME finally would talk about industry best practices. They would talk yeah. about strategies to which they could use to implement to successfully implement the software. So what the business analysts will then do is, so when he, when the business analyst is gathering this information, they are conducting that technique called interview. interview. They are gathering insight. They are gathering information. I generally like to call it your gathering intelligence. Gather yeah. intelligence, right? To then, and so when they gather all those intelligence from different stakeholder groups, then they, you know, put them together like have a consolidation yeah. of all the requirements from different stakeholder groups that then become a list of all the requirements that that software should have by the time it impl is implemented so yeah. interview is used generally to gather insight so that you could have uh you could eventually make informed decisions Decision. so that you yeah, could, absolutely yeah, absolutely exactly. so that's how uh, in in a nutshell even though it's a long summary but that's how organization uses it so now no, not, not, no, not, not in a nutshell video. it's in a crab shell <laughs> in a, in a, in a wide, right uh i'm gonna hand it over to you you take it on from here kdo how could we possibly use interview in our everyday living you know? Okay, hola. Let's let's even be clear. We all use interviews. Like every at at the base um or at the lowest point, interview is asking questions, right? Because you're seeking answers. It is the bread and butter of every business analyst. Ability to elicitate or elicit, ask questions, get information from people, from your stakeholders. As human beings, our survival 
is based on our ability to ask questions. That's how we survive. Sometimes the questions are verbalized, sometimes they are internalized. Like you get into a place, you look around, what's, what is likely to happen? Am I safe? What is likely to jump at me? I'm talking at the primitive sense. Like you're in a village, back, think back 200 centuries, right? So you're thinking, what is in here? What is likely to attack my family? Those are questions interviewing yourself as a person. Mm. as it were that's where it starts from we, we ask questions of ourselves and then we ask questions of people so interviewing i know we, we like to put a name on it and say we are interviewing but it's actually part of our everyday life we do this on a daily basis in families with friends we ask questions where are you going when are you coming back it's because you're trying to gather intelligence right you want to know a child is going to school in the morning. What's in your bag? Did you take your lunch bag? I mean, your lunch uh, backpack or whatever it is. Do you have it? Do you have all your notes? Do you have, have you done your assignment? It's trying to get information. But on a, on a bigger scale, everyone that is, I want to believe, over the age of 20 or 18 even, has had one interview, one form of interview or the other, when you're trying to get a job. That is the commonest one. That's the one we think about and we dread the most because, oh my God, what are they going to ask me? What are they going to say? But look at it this way. When you're interviewing for that job, most people are just, they want to know, are you mm. a good fit? That's the essence. And I like what you say that they're trying to gather intelligence. They want to know, is this person in front of me a good fit? And I like to say to our clients, our students, that when the, that organization is interviewing you, you're also interviewing them. Oh, yeah. It's both ways. Yeah, I know. But most people don't like to think about it both ways. You feel like you're just sitting in front of the judge and the jury and, you know, they're just deciding your case. But honestly, power to you. You two, you are deciding their case. You could decide that, ah, I, I don't think I'm, I'm a good fit or these people are a good fit for my aspirations, my goals and the kind of culture I want to work in. Mm -hmm. So that is on a general level. But if we want to now begin to, you know, bring it home and say, how do we decide about things in our lives? You want to date a guy. I always like to go to the family unit because that's where everything starts from. You're going to ask questions. The, girl, the guy is going to ask you, oh, what's your name? Where are you from? Where, who's your dad? Who's your mom? Your siblings? You know, where do you live? How long have you been in the city? What do you do? What are your aspirations? What is he doing? If he knows, if he has any sense in his head, he's trying to gather intelligence to see that, are you a fit? And I've heard girls say, oh my God, that guy is so full of himself. And you ask why? Say, for the entire time he was just talking about himself he didn't ask about me right uh -huh. because the expectation is interview you want this person to be involved interested in you to ask you questions mm -hmm. and again uh one of my own um saw point or focal point you know we do a lot with new immigrants and immigration and all of that stuff and i ask people particularly in my home country you want to leave, you want to jackpot, as they call it. Have you done your due diligence? Mm. Have you interviewed anybody? Have you gone online to find out what's going on in this place I want to go? Right? But some, sometimes it's just like anywhere apart from here. I just want to leave. I don't care where I'm going to. No, that is a recipe for disaster. The other day, a, a young guy called me. <laughs> Okay, you're going to find this one very funny. This young guy, this young man called me and he was like, uh, Ma, I, I want to go to Canada. I want to go to school. And I'm like, okay, fine. What do you want to do? He says, I already have a bachelor's. I want to go do master's. I'm like, okay, absolutely. Beautiful. In what? He told me. So I said, who's going to sponsor your education? Because those are the questions, interviews. I like to you know, conduct. He said, yeah, my brother. I said, oh, fantastic. And did you tell him? He said, yeah, he knows he's going to sponsor my master. I said, okay, that's fine. So I asked this guy, all I wait for it. Mm -hmm. How much does it cost to run a master's program in Canada? And he was like, mm, I really don't know. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, I checked online and I don't know. Some people said 3,000. I said, 3,000 what? Naira dollars or what? Or pounds? That is not even close. It shows me this guy didn't do his due diligence. Right. So interviewing is doing your due diligence. And, and for, um, what do we call it? So I said to him, I said, for the course you want to run, 
you've got to be thinking minimum of 20 grand, $20,000 for a year. And you, this program is likely to be a two year program. And that is 40,000 Canadian dollars. 10,000 Canadian dollars for living expense per year. Quickly, we're at 60,000. And I'm like, does your brother know that you're signed him up? <laughs> for that huge expense? <laughs> and there was dead silence at the oh, other man. end of the phone. Wow. Then after like something that lasted eternity, this guy started laughing because he could see the foolishness. He was laughing. I I can only imagine. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, yeah, it's 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 um it's a little. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I don't even know where what bucket to put that guy. You are um unknowingly you're signing up someone unknowingly for a huge expense. They don't even know about it. You don't even know what you're getting yourself to. I mean, what's coming to my mind when we're talking about interview is we. I remember. Uh, while I was growing up, we had all forms of nannies, uh, house care, like people that would come and take yeah, care of the home, take care of the kids. I like that. Thank you. Home support, right? And some of the time, my mom would recruit one or two out of desperation because now she doesn't, uh, she doesn't have any other choice than to mm -hmm. to just hire them because she she needs things to be done. She wants someone yeah. to look at like her immediately and, and all that. But the general expectation is you want to interview. You want to ask questions of the person that you're going to put in charge of your home. Because we hear a lot, lot of stories, uh, right? A lot of stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm not oh, yeah. saying Absolutely. particularly that once you conduct that interview and they resonate with your values and your culture and all that, then you hire them and nothing goes wrong. Things still go wrong. Oh, but yeah. things go wrong more if you don't do that prior interview, that intelligence gathering to know what it is they've done before. Have they worked with families that have uh, younger kids? What, what was it like? Uh, what oh. was the experience? Uh, are they, have they worked, if you don't have younger uh, kids, have they worked with family families where they only have older kids? What does it look like? Uh, tell, Ask for that experience. That back and forth exchange of information is key because you are letting that you're letting they're letting you into their life experience, you are letting them into your life experience. That exchange of information helps you both to know if you are a good fit, just like organization, yeah. if you're a good fit for them or not, right? And so interview is really yeah. Apart from just going through the motions of interview, it's important you're asking the right questions. I like that. Yes, you've got yes. to be asking the right questions. And, you know, something that just came to mind when we're talking about home support was um, a friend of mine. Actually, she was a senior friend at, at that time. So she interviewed a nanny for her children and she wanted nanny come house support, somebody that could help in the house. But at that point, they had issues with their water. So they couldn't get, she lived, I think, on the first floor. So they had to draw water like from the lower floor to bring it up. So she actually thought she had this lady packed down. Everything was okay. The lady didn't mind, you know, hauling the water. She had um, one child at that time. The lady was already used to taking care of a child that was that age. But would you, would you believe what the missing piece was? So they did this interview. Everything was good and dandy. The lady started helping. One week, in fact, one week, like three days into the deal, this lady packed her bags like, ah, I'm done. Like, what happened? Said what? Like, so think <laughs> back. The lady <laughs> of the home was pregnant. Okay. This was during the hot, hot season. So she was always taking a shower. Mm. The, the, the home support had never worked with a pregnant woman. She didn't know what to expect. So it okay. was the question she asked that made me, that gives me, you know, makes me giggle every single time I remember. She said, what? You know, in pigeon. I the fetch water, the fetch water. Are you the bait, you the bait. You be fish? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Oh. She couldn't understand why somebody would yeah. take a shower like three yeah. times or four times in a day. 
Mm. And why we laughed at it, and I said, in, in her defense, she didn't get it. Like, what, are you a fish? Why do you need so much water to bathe? Oh, yeah, she didn't, know, she didn't know what pregnancy experiences are like. So she's not able to empathize because she hasn't been there. Oh, my God. And worked with anyone that has ever been pregnant. She, all she knew to do was, oh, yeah, care for the home and care for the kids. So that, that little seemingly insignificant missing. factor yeah. was yeah. missing. And that ruined everything, even though she was the perfect fit in every other area. So we need to be asking the right questions when we are interviewing. Guys, you want to date a girl, ask the right questions. Girls, you want to date a guy, ask the right, you better be asking the right questions. And apart from that, you know, I always like to say, I know this is not really, well, it's part of the interview. When you're talking to someone, you want to, you know, communication, body language. And part of interviewing is observing, watching. Both the, both the spoken and the unspoken, right? Mm -hmm. the, the guy takes the you out on a date. Expression. Yeah. It takes yeah. you out on a date and he's snapping at every single person. Like snapping at the waitress, snapping at people, snapping. And he's been nice to you. It's just a matter of time. Mm. Right? Mm. We've got to be asking the right questions. I've seen couples that are married and you ask, okay, so what's the plan? And they're looking at me like, nope. What do you mean by said, yeah yeah i'm like <laughs> yeah we have a date i said yeah you have a date you know what the color of the day will be you have a cake box you have your photographer you have the wedding gown you have the suit you got the rings but what is the plan for after the ceremony oh yeah well, we we have a house yes so what about children how many kids do you want to have when do you want to start having kids mm. what about your goals and aspirations have you sat down this is my goal i i I'm a, as an engineer, I'm going to be away from home for most of the time. Is she okay to take care of the kids while you're gone? Mm. Or is she the kind of person that cannot survive without her husband by her side like every night? What's that like? We've got to be asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And not just, and that is not just a, a, a checkbox that, okay, bucket, done. It's an ongoing thing. You have children, your children are growing. You've got to be asking them questions. A kid walks through the door, squeezing his face. You've got to ask, how was school today, my darling? What happened? How was class? How was this? How was, until you poke, 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 until you get the response that you should really be getting. We must, I mean, to be able to effectively interview, in my mind, you've got to be aware. Self-aware, then situation, environmental awareness has to be there. All right. As a family unit, are we asking the right questions of our family, you know, members, people we live with, or are we just assuming? I've got to be asking questions. I'm going to be asking the right questions. Awesome. Okay. So everyone, you heard it. You heard it. Now interview, you know how to use it. You already use it, but now I need, we need you to intensify the way you use it. Because if you look at it from the approach of your gathering intelligence, your gathering insight, right, to be able to uncover some crucial details. More importantly, if you're embarking on a major initiative in your mm. life, right, mm. you want to uncover those crucial details. You don't want them to be like a curveball that just hits you in your head by the time you're neck deep into that initiative. Yeah. You want to uncover them ahead of time, right? That's how you could use it to. To live an intentional life, actually, because remember Absolutely. what we do every time here, sharing all these details is because we want you to be purposeful. We want you to live in you, you live your life intentionally so you are not caught out on our ways, right? You're on the guard, right? Ready, almost ready for anything to yeah. um uh, to go after it. So I know we're way ahead of time, right? I mean, uh, behind time right now, we gotta be in class. Um, mm -hmm. so do you have your last, a last word before we wrap it up today? No, I'm just, again, like we always say, November is gradually coming to an end too. And by implication, 2023 is wrapping up. What are those goals that you interviewed yourself January 1st that you were going to do? Um, how is that Yeah, how is that going? Where are you with it? If be, becoming a business analyst or going into the IT world is one of those goals, you still got like... Mm, 
give or take a month, five weeks to be able to achieve those goals, at least start. Let it be that 2023 you actually started, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. talk to myself, talk to Ola, let's make it happen for you. And what, even if it's not a business analysis goal, take a look at those goals. Do a revisit of that interview. You still got time to be able to achieve it. Nothing Absolutely. happens until we push for it. So let's go push for it this week, guys. Let's go make something of ourselves. Awesome. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, we encourage you to join us in our next episode of Business Analysis Simplified. Until mm -hmm. next time, we encourage you to remember to embrace the magic of intentional, purposeful living. Okay. Until then, we say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Boy. Boy. <laughs>